Welcome back guys, what's going on? Today we're doing again, <coughs> we're carrying over with CREST, CRT track in Hack the Box. Today's machine is Fourierst. And as you can see, we <coughs> haven't got much left to close this track. So today's machine will be Fourierst, and in today's machine we're going to explore the uh, Active Directory, Windows Active Directory, and the Privilege Escalation. So we spawn the machine, we get the IP address, and we get started. All right, so let's log into my machine. Okay, so first we start with nmap scan dash a and the IP address. As uh, you guys uh, have seen in the previous videos, I use dash a all the time. Okay, so we got several open ports, and judging by the output, it is a Windows Server 2016 standard or Windows machine, as you can see here. And it has Active Directory installed, LDAP. So we have a couple things to enumerate, plenty of ports to discover. So we have 53 for DNS. The first thing we can enumerate the DNS server. And if you have watched the last video, we performed DNS zone transfer. Okay. Uh, DNS zone transfer can be performed using uh, certain commands to be able to uh, discover more hosts, discover more subdomains, and we can also discover sensitive information. There, there is potential for sensitive information to be stored under the uh, other records, text records, A records, um, all of these can be discovered using using zone transfer and dig, the tool dig. Um, but we're not going to do that in this scenario here, the current scenario in hand, because there is nothing to uncover. Okay, port 88, so we have curve press running, it means we can attempt to perform curve roasting or AS curve roasting. Um, we have also RPC, we can also attempt to interact with the RPC uh, server using RPC client, discover the current users, the groups, LDAP running, 445. And also we have the rest of the ports. And one other thing we have on the machine is port 5985, which means we have WinRM running on the machine. So if we're able to discover a username with password, we can log in and establish the first foothold on the machine using WinEvil WinRM. <coughs> Going back to the scan, 445, okay, and RPC. So what are we going to do? No, not this one, sorry, this one. Yeah. What are we going to do here? We're going to try and interact with the RPC client. So in the second terminal here I have, I started interacting with the uh, server. So basically I run RPC client, dash u, I specify an empty username, and dash n, the option is not to supply a password and the IP address of the uh, computer or the target. The first thing I did is enumerating the users using the command n enum domain users. Using this command, I get the list of the available users and their RID. This is very important to take a note of because if you want to dig more information about a specific user, such as a guest or an administrator, for example, you're going to have to supply the RID if you want to do that over RPC client. So after we get the available uh, users, as you can see, we have administrator, guest, and other users such as Sebastian, Lucinda, Service Account, Alfresco, Mark, Andy. Next, we enumerate the groups using enum domain groups. All of these commands are stored in my note file. Active Directory can find it under the channel membership. Back again. So enumerate the groups. We find the groups. We have add domain admins, domain users. Okay. So we are pen testing a Windows Server Active Directory machine, which means we are interested in learning. Uh, the ultimate objective is to escalate to the domain admins. We want to become part of the domain admins or we want to take over the domain admin account or the administrator account. So we're going to have to dig more who are the current members of the domain admins. So how can we do that? As you can see, if you scroll down, query group enables us to get specific information about specific group. As you can see, this is the RID of the group. If you go up, you see the RID of the group domain admins happens to be this one. So we supply the RID of the domain group to the query. This way we get information about the domain admins group, the group name, description, and number of members. We have only one member. If we want to query the members, we supply the query or we issue the query, query group member, and the RID of the group we are querying. This gives us 
the RID of the user. So that's the, I, the RID of the user. So we go up to the output of the output that shows the current list of the users, and we map the IID we saw earlier to the IID here. So it happens to be the administrator. So in the domain admins or under the domain admins group, there is only one member, which is the do, which is the do, which is the administrator. We query the administrator. As you can see, we get more information about the administrator, the domain the members that are part of it, and we exit. Okay. So now we have list of users. If you see, right? We store all of these users in a file, in a text file. You can copy paste them in a file. And the next thing, what are we going to do? So right now we used, we enumerated this port. What we're going to do here, we're going to uh, try our hands with AS reprosting. So AS reprosting is the method of um, trying to get the hash of a specific user among a list of users using reprosting or AS reprosting, which in fact relies on something, on an attribute set in Windows Active Directory. If it was set, which is pre-authenticate, if a pre-authenticate was set uh, as a property or as an attribute on the users, we can perform a strip roasting and grab the hash of that user. That's what I did. So to perform a strip roasting, we use a tool in Impacket called get np users. We provide the domain controller IP address, which happens to be the box IP address. And we provide, as you can see, the fully qualified domain name. How can we get the fully qualified domain name? We go back to the nmap scan, and in the output, we highlight the DNS information. If you scroll up, as you can see, the computer name is forest, domain name is h2b-local, and the fully qualified domain name is forest.h2b.local. We provide it here, and we use the option users file, and we supply the file that contains the list of users we grabbed from the output of the RPC client. And luckily for us, uh, let's see here, which one? Yeah, this one. Luckily for us, we were able to grab the hash of this user, service alfresco. So service alfresco is a username that has the pre-authenticate attribute set which is a weakness, you have to disable it, but under this context, it was enabled. And this is how, this is what got us the ability to grab the hash. Now you have a hash. Now, you know what you're going to do next, right? You store this hash in a file called hash, and then we use John the Ripper. We provide the file name that contains the hash and the port list, Rakio. Easy enough, easy and fast enough, we get the password. It is S3 service. Okay, going back to the NMAP scan now. We got the username and password, and don't forget that we have even when RM running on port 5985. Now we can spin up even when RM. So sudo evil win rm dash i provide the IP address of the server or the machine dash u the username dash p the password, and we log in and establish the first foothold. And here we have the user. User the text, and this is the flag. Okay, back to the nmap scan. What to do next? We're done enumeration because we got the first foothold on the machine. So what to do next? The next thing we have to do is to understand the nature of the machine we are interacting with. Now, normally, we have a couple methods to perform privilege escalation. Since we are dealing with Windows Active Directory machine, we actually, one of the shortest methods to escalate the privileges is to run Bloodhound which is a tool to show relationships between users, groups, and the uh, quickest path to perform uh, or to escalate to admin. So that's what I did. I downloaded Sharphound, Sharphound script from my own machine using this partial command. Sharphound is the script that is uh, considered as a companion to Bloodhound. You run Sharphound on your target. Sharphound will collect as much information as possible about the relationships between the units, organization units, the objects, and Active Directory tree, and it gives you an output in the form of zip file. Now, first thing first, we downloaded the Sharphound, right? Okay, the next thing we run Sharphound using this command. Invoke Bloodhound. We specify the collection method. 
the collection method has to be all. We want to collect all that available about the environment. We specify the domain name, which happens to be the main domain name here to be local. The LDAP user, we have got control over, which happens to be service alfresco and the LDAP pass of that user. Using this command, we will, using this command, we spawn the script sharp pound and we collect the information. The output will be a zip file. That zip file we import it now to Bloodhound. Now the installation of Bloodhound is covered through a plethora of videos. You can find it through the internet, guys. You, if you want, you can go back to these videos. You can see how to install Bloodhound and how to uh, start it. So I got now the file Bloodhound. So to download the file to my local machine, I use Evil WinRM download functionality. But as you can see, I tried it several times and it didn't work. And I discovered that I have to supply the full path here. Download the full path of the file, which I want to download, the full path in my machine, and I will be, and I was able to download the file. Now, once I was able to download the file, I need to spin up now Bloodhound. The first thing I will do is to start the new 4J console using this command, sudo new 4J console. When this is started, I start Bloodhound using the command sudo Bloodhound. Once I do that, Okay, what I will do, you will go to upload, choose the file from the, the, the location, or you can just drag and drop. You can just drag and drop like this. I'm not going to do it because I did this already. Okay, now once you do that, you will have the file here. You go to more information, to analysis, scrolling all the way down, and click on or select under shortest paths, select find shortest paths to domain admins. Once you click that, you will get this output. Okay. All right. So where I am, this is me, service alfresco. And the path to the admin is, or as you can see, it goes through service accounts. So alfresco is part of service accounts and service accounts is part of privileged accounts. And then as you can see, I get to the administrator user, but how? But there is no clear uh, path here. The path is clear, but how do I get from privileged accounts group to administrator? If you scroll down here, you can see the privileged accounts, which I am part of, okay? You can see that uh, privileged accounts, if you click on this, okay, scroll down, you can see the direct members and unenrolled members. If you click on direct members, you can see service account is part of privileged accounts, right? Click on unrolled members. We have service accounts. Okay. Now, if we go under group memberships, click on first degree group memberships. You can see we have remote management users and we have account operators. So privileged IT group is part of account operators. Remember that service alfresco is part of account, is part of privileged IT accounts, which is also part of account operators, which means um, alfresco here is member of account operators and inherits all the permissions assigned to the group account operators. Let's go back to the shortest path. Analysis. Okay, now this is the account operators. And account operators is also part of Exchange Windows permissions. And it has write DACL. What does that mean? We covered that previously, right? If you remember. So write ADCL, having write ADCL for a user, such as, for example, Bob over a group, such as administrator, it means that this user can be added to that group, which means our user, service Alfresco, is part of account operators. And because of write ADCL, DACL, it can be added to exchange Windows permissions. If we can add it to here, to that group, we can then perform something called DC sync attack, which is actually uh, the ability for, we grant the user, service Alfresco, the ability to replicate changes over the entire domain controller. Okay, the first step now is to add it to the group. So all of these are 
Uh, okay, so as you can see here, scrolling down, scrolling down. Oh, wait. this one? No. Okay, here. So I use this command net group, okay, exit change, net group, and then I specify the group name, Windows, exit change, Windows permissions, and then I specify the username, service I fresco, and I add it, right? So the command can run successfully. After that, I query the username, and I see now it is part of here. It is part of the exchange Windows uh, permissions users. Now going back here, once this user is part of this, the rest is to give it the DC sync privilege. Now there are multiple methods to perform this. There are two manual methods and one automated method. I'm going to go through one manual method because the other two methods, including the automated method, did not work with me. All right, but I'm going to show you my failed attempts. All right, so let's scroll down. So what I did, scrolling down, 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 where? Here. Okay, so first, I created the variable called username. Uh, sorry, I created a variable username, and I added alfresco to it with a password. And then I passed all of this to a secure string. This is the regular PowerShell credential creation process. So we create a credential, and because we want to use the credential in a secure format, we're going to have to go through these steps. We specify username and password, and we store the password in a secure string. Okay. And then we create a credential. A credential contains the username and the secure string we created. Up to this step. All the way till. Wait. Till this step. This step, I create a credential, a pair of credentials. Then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the set of credentials I created here under this variable and add the DC sync privilege using this command add domain object ACL. So, typically, we are adding an ACL for that user, right? We specify the credential. The credential contains the username Alfresco and the password service. And then we we'll specify the principal identity, which happens to be the alfresco username. Target identity will be domain admins, and the rights will be DC sync. Unfortunately, this method did not work with me because the add domain object SEL was not recognized. It needs to be imported somehow. I tried to import it to some other method, but it failed. But it is still a valid method to give DC sync rights to a user that is part of a group which has write DACL in the domain controller. Since the, this method didn't work with me, guys, what I did, this is one of the manual methods, valid manual methods you can use. Maybe not in this scenario, it didn't work with me, but you can still use it in other scenarios. The other method is this. This is the other method. So using one of the impact tools, we go to impact, we use this tool. So what this tool will do, it will spawn a web server on my local machine. Okay. I specify with dash the option, I specify the full path to the fully qualified domain name, specifying the protocol LDAP, and I specify the username which I want to escalate. Escalate user service alfresco. This will start a web server. Let me scroll down here. So, as you can see, it started a web server on my machine. Where is this? Yeah, web server started on my machine. So, all I have to do is to navigate to 192.7.0.0.1. What's going to happen? It's going to ask me for username and password for service alfresco. I supply them here because I have them. There's an and password. Supply them to the login prompt here. And what's going to happen next? This tool will perform the DC sync privilege escalation, as you can see here. Trying using DC sync with secret stump. This is what user. Yeah. So he's telling you that the DC sync rights have been granted to the user service alfresco now all you have to do is to use secret stump to dump the administrator hash so there you go now after we get this output from this tool we go to secret stump we specify the domain name the username the password at the fully qualified domain name and we get the administrator hash this way, we, this way we have performed DC sync attack, domain replication changes, attack on the domain controller. Basically, uh, this is what happened. And of course, we used John the Ripper 
or we use we don't need to use John Dripper by the way. So you get the hash of the administrator. This is the hash. What you have to do, you can use pass the hash or using PS exec from Impacket as well. And specify the shell you want, the hashes, and then you get access to the machine and we get the root flag. That's how it was guys. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found this a great learning experience. I'm going to see you in the next video.